As condemnation of the abductions spread, Saudi Arabia's Grand Mufti, the top religious authority and the birthplace of Islam, said Boko Haram rebels who conducted the abductions had set up to smear the image of Islam. And Jonathan's government has been criticized for its slow response to the hostage crisis, and Friday is the first time he has said where he thinks the girls are being held. And, there are stories that they have moved them outside of the country. But if they move that number of girls to Cameroon, people will see, so I believe they are still in Nigeria, Jonathan told journalists. And, we are also working with the experts that will use remote sensors to see them, insurgents, wherever they are. So that basically says they are within the Sambisa area, Jonathan said, referring to a forest that is a known Boko Haram hideout near the school from where the girls were abducted. And he was speaking on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in the Nigerian capital. The event showcased investment opportunities in Africa's biggest economy, but was partially overshadowed by the kidnapping and a broader militant threat. And Boko Haram's struggle for an Islamic state has killed thousands since it erupted in mid-2009 and has destabilized swaths of the northeast of Africa's top oil producer, as well as neighbors Cameroon and Niger. And militants stormed a secondary school in the village of Shabak, near the Cameroon border, on April 14 and kidnapped the girls, who were taking exams at the time. Fifty have since escaped, but more than 200 remain with the insurgents. And Nigeria's military has struggled to maintain security in the turbulent northeast as Boko Haram grows bolder. An amnesty report and human rights group Amnesty International said in a statement, citing multiple interviews with sources, that the security forces had been warned more than four hours in advance about the school attack but did not do enough to stop it. And, the fact that Nigerian security forces knew about Boko Haram's impending raid but failed to take the immediate action needed to stop it will only amplify the national and international outcry at this horrific crime, said Ned Sanaple, Amnesty's Africa Director of Research and Advocacy. And Nigeria's Defense Headquarters spokesman Chris Alukile dismissed Amnesty's report as baseless and said it was aimed at tarring the reputation of the country's authorities. And, the report is just a collation of the rumors, views and allegations of their fellow detractors and local operatives, he said. And Saudi Arabia's Grand Mufti Sheikh Abdulaziz Al Al Sheikh said Boko Haram had been, misguided, and should be, shown the wrong path and be made to reject it. And his remarks came as religious leaders in the Muslim world, who often do not comment on militant violence joined in denouncing Boko Haram leader Abu Bakr Sheikh Al forcing Allah had told him to sell off the kidnapped girls as forced brides. And Jonathan on Thursday thanked countries including the United States, Britain, France and China for their support in trying to rescue the girls. All have offered assistance. International police agency Interpol on Friday also offered its help. And British experts including diplomats, aid workers and Ministry of Defense officials arrived in Nigeria on Friday to advise the government on the search. And the Senate Foreign Relations Subcommittee on Africa Affairs said it will hold a hearing next Thursday on U.S. offers of assistance to Nigeria after the abductions. And the revolt has displaced more than 250,000 people in Nigeria and 60,000 have fled the country, UN Refugee Agency, UNHCR, spokesman Adrian Edwards said in Geneva on Friday. UNHCR is, alarmed at the recent wave of attacks on civilians, he said. And a militant attack on the market town of Gomburu early on Monday killed at least 125 people, police said. And, additional reporting by Tim Cox and Shiji Ogaoka in Abuya, Lenra Ola in Maiduguri, John Miles in Geneva, Andrew Callis in Paris, Sami Abudi in Dubai, Patricia Zinjural in Washington and Guy Falk in Bridge in London. Editing by Janet 